Hello, everybody. It's the City Mad Haven here today, and you know I, I'm a little bit iffy about these tanks with the Progettos, like with all the Italian heavies being reworked. Um, so far, the couple of matches that I put inside of the tier eight, the nine, and the ten uh, today, I've got we're going to be going over the Progetto C C55 mod 54. Um, I I can say. That with the accuracy debuffs of these tanks, I have felt it a little bit. But it just means that I've got to readjust a tad bit, take a little bit longer to aim. And I kind of feel like I'm hitting that point now. Um, so with the matches I've been putting in today, I've put only four matches inside of the Progetto CC55 Mod 54. So the Tier 8 Italian Heavy. And so far, I am impressed. I'm not going to lie, I am definitely impressed. It is actually holding on really well. So let's go over what the buffs were, and then we'll take a look at the armor model, everything else, and I'll try and give you guys ideas on how to play these tanks to help you grind through them. Sadly, though, I have not yet played with the stock gun on this tank, so I have no idea how bad that is. But with the reload improvements and basically having the same reload, uh, getting the next upgrade from 202 standard pin, Jumping up to 220 standard pin, 242 premium pin, uh, it might turn out pretty good. So starting off with the, you know the, the mod 54, Pajetto heavy tank, uh, turret one reloads everything else. They've done a decent amount of work with these, but the biggest improvement was from 19.9 to 18.9, 17.9 to 20, 16, and 13. So. This reload rate here by itself, your first shell takes a little bit longer, your second shell had uh, 2.9 seconds taken off of it, and your final shell has got like a 5 to 6 second difference. Um, there are a few things about the mechanics that I would like to see changed, however. Whenever you're inside the battle and you get hit with your interclip reload, you kind of get stuck out on this really ridiculous interclip reload. So 6.95 is what it's saying right here with 8.56, 10.7. But every single one of these, you can add three seconds to it because of uh, interclip reload or 3.5 seconds. And it kind of takes away from it. I, I feel like if I fire my second shell, the interclip reload should apply. But with the next shell that loads in, the interclip reload should not exist. That's kind of a way to compensate for the fact that they did not add the um, reload mechanics to these tanks, which I can't remember what they called that reload mechanic. If, yeah, I can't remember what it was. It's been a minute since I've seen it. And it it's just, it feels really weird to look at these statistics and then see 8.31, but the fact is your rate of fire lies to you if you're firing a single shell. It's a six rounds per minute. Uh, accuracy 0.33. This does currently have a crew on it, I believe. Yes, it does. So that's with a crew. Now, they, the reworks, the interclip reload, the 10 second reload. Um, I would like to see them kind of, it's reload compensation. That's what it was called. Took a second to remember it. Um, I'm saying um a lot. I feel like the emulator today. Uh, okay, we're, we're done with that. If they remove the reload compensation, like the first shell has the compensation. Like you have to load the interclip reload, but then they remove it from the second shell to help increase the reload for not penalizing you for firing two shells. That would be better off. So rather than a 22 second reload time, it's actually a 19 second reload to an 18 second reload time because it's not like interclip reload is putting it into the magazine and pre prepping the shot to fire. That's a three second interclip reload. But whenever you load that second shell, they're putting it on the rack. There is no interclip reload. So that right there, a little bit confusing. And yeah. Now with these tanks, the way that you're going to be wanting to play your Italian heavies, every single one of them, keep in mind, once you hit tier eight to tier 10, these are not going to be your frontline brawlers. Uh, one of the biggest weak spots on the uh, tier eight is this little round off part. It comes around. So you have that smooth round edge. Um, it's just a way to expand the turret bay a little bit. Whenever you're side scraping, you're going to be exposed 
reverse side scraping, your back drive wheel is exposed on the inside because the tracks go in, but you do have 70 millimeters of side armor. You can rely on side scraping. With nine degrees of gun depression, on the other hand, and a really decent turret, we got 260 on the mantle, 180 on the turret, 100 millimeters on top armor, slowly decreasing as you uh, slowly come out. Lower plate, 65 millimeters. If you want to pull a corner to try and bait a shell, you do have to be a little bit worried about your front drive wheels because they have that kind of bottom huds. Some tanks don't have them, some tanks do. These ones do, so keep that in mind. You can get tracked because of these as well because they are connected to the drive wheels. So be a little bit careful whenever you're trying to bait and risk shots. Another thing is, and this is something that I've noticed with a lot of tanks, um, I first found it on the Tier 8 Italian. Uh, I love that tank, and I can't remember the name of it. The 50TP prototype. Um, that the Under Armour, because over here on console, we don't have a whole lot of... Uh, I've noticed that a lot of our spaced armor doesn't really absorb. So if people are firing into your tracks, they're going to be hitting the 20 millimeter armor, the 25 millimeter armor right underneath the entire side of the tank. If you kind of find yourself prompt up on the side of a wall overextending, they can ricochet into this top armor. So keep that in mind whenever you guys are trying to uh, side scrape. Now, these tanks, I'm not exactly... You know gonna diss on them or anything else i have not done a single review on any of these just because they weren't really playable at first they were extremely difficult to play and with this rework they're a lot better so let's go ahead and take a look at the statistics i'll tell you guys how i feel about the tank i have not yet put 50 matches in it but coming over the next week and a half i will be and i'll be putting out an official review on the tank and then letting you guys know exactly how i feel about the entire line um, with 8, 9, and 10. 7 is not going to be included just because it, it's a 7. And honestly, the Caro 88 is a really good performer to begin with. And I'll leave that up to uh, some other content creators to take care of. And back at it. Gotta love that pause feature. Okay, so still concealment. Right off the bat, this is a heavy tank. You're not going to be concealed ever. 1,400 hit points. This is stock, by the way. 320 alpha, 202 standard, 230 premium, 105 high explosive pin. Those high explosives, if you can get them pinned with 105 millimeters of pin, um, there are some tanks you cannot really pin the lower plates. Conquerors coming over a hill, uh, you can pin their lower plates. E75 is coming over a hill. Uh, no, you cannot, but you can pin them with your premium of 230. This thing is, is definitely be lacking with 230. Let's go ahead and max this out real quick. Jing with the 220, 242. Um, 242, I've been kind of limited on penetration for tier eights for a while uh 242 you're gonna find yourself struggling against tens really needing to aim your shells as much as you can and just taking time in your shots because of what they've done to the accuracy um your view range at 370 on the other hand you are not gonna want to be in the front row ever you're gonna be one to you want to be the mid-range support inside these tanks utilizing your armor the best you can hitting as many ridges as you can as well just to try and take peak shots make sure that you have only one enemy in view at a time maybe two enemies in view at a time that way you're defended on whatever flank you're on you know you poke out a little bit you can get your shot off or if you feel comfortable enough try to reverse side scrape because this thing is going to be a decent reverse side scraper with that 70 millimeters of side armor um the top armor of these tanks as well let's go ahead and jump back over so we got 40 millimeters and then 30 right behind that on the back, we only have 25, and underneath, we only have 25. So if you're coming over a ridge, you're definitely going to get pinned, period, on your lower plate. Underneath the turret as well, be a little bit careful with only that 20 millimeters. It's really these tanks. Brawling in them is not going to be an option, just because of how thin the upper plate is, and just how the turret's put together. And if someone's in front of you, they can get a little bit of shots underneath your uh, cheeks, and find that line that's right underneath. Or they can just aim straight down and pin your armor overall now the damage per shell the reason why i want them to add a little bit of a compensation mechanic is because you're only doing 320 damage per shot with your three shot clip you're going to find it lacking a little bit in a lot of ways just because in that 10 seconds it takes you to load your final shell uh for instance we can say like the is3 auto is going to load a shell in like 9.2 seconds 8.9 seconds and he's going to be putting 390 into you every single time you put 320 into him. The thing is, if you try to clip him out, you have to take a couple of shots before you try to clip out anybody. 
So if you have to clip out someone, just know putting two or three shots in first and taking almost all your hit points of damage and then guaranteeing a kill with those last two shells is going to be the only way to really do it. Which, if they were to add a little bit of a compensation for your reload, it would um, negate that a tad bit. You'd be more willing to fire off two shells and then wait for those two shells to load again because it's three seconds off and would actually increase your DPM just a little bit. Uh, 2.9 aim time. Um, I have not yet played these tanks with uh, vertical stabilizers or enhanced gun lane drive, uh, but seeing 2.9, you can probably get away with dropping ventilation and going after um, enhanced gun lane drive to get that aim time up a little bit more. And especially the accuracy at 0.39 and the aim time at 0.9, um, dropping loader and dropping ventilation for vertical for you know vert stabs and enhanced gun lane drive it is viable but you're going to be sacrificing your dpm but you're always going to be at the mid range doing that will make you primarily a solid support tank but you're going to find yourself lacking whenever it comes down to you being a part of only maybe a three-man team or unless you're doing a lot of crossfires and setting up areas to be ambushes which you can do a lot inside this game so there is that um, ventilation for either vertical stabilizers or enhanced gun lane drive. You can trade that out without much of a problem and be fine with it. Other thing is, I actually somehow unequipped the turret. Uh, actually, if you have over it, it's not doing that. Okay. But aim time and dispersion values of 0.39, you're going to find a lot of problems. Uh, interclip reload 3.5 seconds, ammo capacity of 33 rounds. Uh, for me, on my loadout, what I like to take is 12 standards, 24 premiums, 3 high explosives, 9 degrees of gun depression, this thing's going to be able to work a ridgeline without a problem, along with that 20 degrees of elevation, so no problem aiming up. Turret armor, 180, 100 on the side, 100 on the rear. Uh, traverse speed of the turret is 30 degrees per second, which I have felt um, you're not going to need rapid aim on this tank. This thing already feels really quick. If you take rapid aim, you're only going to get like a 33.3%. Uh, well, 33.3 .3 on your traverse speed, so really not much of a benefit for how fast it is. In slower tanks, it's worth trying to get that one or two degrees extra. View range, we've already talked about it. You're going to feel it lacking just a tad bit. However, these tanks are quick. The tier 8 um, out of all three of them is the quickest with 17.71 power to weight. I have noticed that I've been getting up to uh, 45 top speed quite a bit. If you want to and you just want to have a lot of mobility, um, vertical stabilizers... Enhanced gun lane drive, you can drop both those, drop ventilation, get a power terrain on this just to bump it up to 18, maybe a little bit higher, like 18.4, and you'll be really pushing the line a lot more with that extra mobility because I've been relocating a lot in this tank, and maybe a power terrain would help it out quite a bit. Um, along with that, reverse speed of 15, it's comfortable. It doesn't feel too bad. You can take your shot and back up. Um, all these tanks right here, they buff their rever reverse speeds from 12 to 15 so primarily you know that little bit of a reverse speed bump it is noticeable quite a bit uh 12 percent fire chance as well you're not going to need to take a fire extinguisher on this tank um all of my italians including the basante and i believe i have like 50 something 50 70 matches in the basante i've never been set on fire once Traverse speed of the tracks, you have 28 degrees. Terrain resistance is 1.1 for hard, 1.2 for medium, and 2.3 for soft. Um, Off-road driving might be optional on this, but with your medium terrain resistance being 1.2 and 2.3, we don't have a lot of uh, soft terrains in this game really anywhere. So there's only a couple maps that actually have soft terrains that are going to be slowing you down by that much. But off-road driving can help out with your uh, overall mobility on the medium terrain. Uh, signal range is 710 meters. It's going to be helping out with assist damage, a couple of other things. So that's going to be about it. But being in the middle of the pack, you're not going to find yourself really trying to get assist damage unless you're going for tracks. So other than that, let's go ahead and dive into some gameplay. Um, the matches I played in this tank, honestly, I kind of want to put a few more matches in it. Because I'm not going to lie, I am appreciating these tanks a little bit more just because of what they're capable of with the reloads that they have and everything that they offer they honestly do not feel too bad overall like they are actually performing a little bit better than what i was expecting and seeing just the the way that they're put together right now 
with the reloads, everything else, they they feel like they're in a really good state. Um, War gaming, they decided to give out this huge thing saying like, we we don't feel like these tanks need a buff at all, um, just because they're uh, maybe performing a little bit above average and a little bit under average in some areas. Uh, one of the things that they said that they're uh, you know that they don't want to do is because they're penetrating a little bit too many shots. So they decreased penetration on some of the rounds, increased penetration on some of the rounds. And they did kind of like an ammo swap on the tier 9 for uh, penetration wise. Small gun has less penetration now and the big gun has the most penetration. Which honestly, I don't see the point in that. They should have left it the way it was and just found a way to work around it. Because a lot of the people who were actually playing these tanks and grinding out these tanks and being a little bit more competitive inside these tanks are people who are a little bit more experienced at the game and want to get the challenge of grinding out these tanks prior. Uh, for the average player or for maybe someone a little bit new to the game, these tanks are a little bit too much of a struggle to be able to play just because their reloads were kind of playing against you quite a bit and you found yourself struggling a lot more. Now, this is the reason why I've, I've said in the past that statistic based buffing and debuffing is flawed because whenever you have tanks come in that are underperforming for the average player, yet you can put a good player inside of it and they know positions to go to, they know areas that they can kind of sit out and maintain and actually apply what they know to the game and be able to get those extra shots in every, every single once in a while. Uh, right there, two shots, we have one dirt and one flight. Actually, I wonder if that went through his tank because I remember watching that and it looked like it went through his turret on the left side. Now. There is a lot of controversy about this because you can have the good players playing the tank and, you know, kind of helping achieve that above average a lot. And, you know, they're going to play a little bit more conservative. But now that the rework has been put in place, um, giving these tanks another two, three months, we're going to be seeing their damages start to average out and a lot of other things start to average out because we now have the average player jumping inside these tanks. And, you know, I'm not saying this to be mean to anyone or to belittle anyone. It's just the fact is we have players in this game who are highly skilled, who are even better than me in a lot of situations as well. And overall, it's like I didn't want to play these things because I also struggled inside them. You know, um, I'm all about telling you guys just the honest truth. Some of us in this game, we suck. And we play it. Honestly, if you guys want to improve, play with the platoon. Have have fun playing. That's what I do all the time. Um, I, I team up with viewers every once in a while. Currently, I'm playing with Puddle. Uh, he's been a part of the channel for as uh, quite the amount of time, actually. And I've just really been enjoying playing with him, helping him learn the game. Helping him kind of, you know, appreciate the game a little bit more. Because all the time when he would message me, he was all like, I'm getting ready to quit the game because I can't seem to win anything. And now that he's playing with us, he... He sees a lot of things that he's been doing wrong, and he's learning a lot more about the game. And, you know, for me, that's kind of what I'm here to do. I'm here to help the newer player base learn the game, learn mechanics. Uh, you know, that's why I, I try my hardest to make sure that all the content that I put out, it's the reason why I don't upload videos every single day. Because if I do that, I'm going to run out of things to say, and I'm just going to find myself stuck. I'm just, I'm a content creator that's going to be taking his time to make sure that everything I share with you guys is on dot. That way, whenever you guys come down these lines, or you're looking to do an equipment loadout or whatever, you have a reference point that you can come to for assistance if you ever need it. And if you guys ever have questions or anything that you really want to know, um, put a comment down and leave a question mark about it saying that you really don't know or that you need help, and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Now, with this Progetto 54, I have found that with the accuracy and everything else, if you want to play the mid-range role, Vertical Stabilizers is going to help you get in closer. Uh, enhanced Gun Lane Drive is going to help you be a little bit more supportive as this mid-range sniper. But primarily, these tanks, they are performing very well. With the three-shot autoloader that they have, um, if you fire off two shells, you should be perfectly fine as long as you're not firing off that third shell. Uh, third shell, if it's a moment that you feel like you need to fire off that third shell. If you don't feel like you need to, then don't worry about it. 
Now, overall, Progetto 54 with the rework, um, it does kind of suck that they did hammer down the accuracy and aim time the way that they did, just because this thing has got such low alpha. You know, 320 alpha, you're not going to be hitting people super hard. And right there's another shell this game. I Does, does that seem like a ghost shell to you guys? Does it seem like ghost shells are back? Or am I just uh, blind, not able to trace that round? I mean, re-watching this recording now that I, I see that. I didn't even see the shell. I just saw it. It kind of seems like it went through his tank rather than um, making direct contact. So it, it kind of does feel like ghost shells are back. And uh, that's not fun. So, talking about the tank, you know, I, I'm going to have to invest a little bit more time inside this line and play these tanks a tad bit more. Um, the tier 8, however, I am kind of enjoying the tier 8 a little bit. You know, I don't want to, I didn't want to jump in and just have an absolute negative opinion about the tank right off the bat. Just because it's kind of the, the way it is. Like, you know, because it, it just, yesterday I played them. And I was a little bit, uh, kind of just really irritated by the way, what they did to some of these tanks because they made the accuracy worse knowing that these tanks already have low alpha guns and they made the aim time worse, even though they have low alpha guns like this one, for instance, this is the lowest out of all of them. I don't feel like they should have changed any of the accuracy on this tank or missed with the aim time on this tank, but they did. So it, it kind of takes away from the tank. Um, this match right here, this is actually, um, I believe, two matches after the first match I showed you guys. Uh, this match, I Milanovka is one of those maps that I love to test the tank's armor. I love to take this bottom ridge area to see if you're able to corner peek effectively. And um, it, it kind of shows off like what the tanks are able to do. Plus, I know this position very well. And I'm a little bit more comfortable in this spot. I kind of know how to angle my tank in ways to avoid artillery and kind of hugs, hug the side of that. But, but the artillery has got a bigger arc than I kind of regret it because I'm going to get hit. Especially with the really weak top armor on this tank at 25 millimeters and 30 millimeters on top of the turret. Uh, you will find yourself getting penetrated by artillery quite a bit and one shot quite a bit. So, yeah, you're going to find yourself at a massive disadvantage there if, you know, if you're getting focused out by artillery. Now, some of the cons of these tanks is definitely the accuracy and reload. Power to weight, honestly, these tanks have got a lot of things going for them in the high performance category. They're fast, they have mobility, um, reload times suffer a tad bit, but the thing is, they have reliable armor. Uh, the 260 on the gun mantle, the 180 on top of the turret and below the turret if you're trying to come over, and also the 150 side cheeks on the left and right of the turret as well. Um, I find these tanks to be really good haul down fighters and able to work it out. Right there, we're loading in our second shell and taking our time. We don't want to poke around for the Ferdinand to get a shot into us. We're kind of watching our reload and possibly going to take our third shot there to take a tank out of the match. So yeah, we're taking our third shot. Uh, Blade's pulling up to the left inside the Eradicator and telling Blade, you know, you don't need to poke this corner, kind of make them come to you because I'm stuck on reload for a second. And th this is going to be the downfall. If you clip out, you're going to be on reload for quite some time and stuck. But it, it kind of gives you a little bit more time to think ahead of what you want to do. And, you know, it's going to help out and give you a little bit more. It gives you time to think. Um, these tanks, they're not going to be meant for people who enjoy getting in the front row and always being in the fight. These tanks are going to be, if you're single shotting, you can get in and out of the fight quite a bit. But if you're trying to clip out, you're trying to take down opponents, uh, these tanks are going to be a little bit harder to do that with. And we're going to be putting a second shell inside of the VK-36. The Strum. Yeah, I, I'm kind of running out of things to say. Ammo capacity wise, uh, the 33 rounds in this tank is a little disappointing just because you only have 320 alpha. But seeing that it's a tier 8, that's probably enough. If it was tier 10 with that much ammunition and that reload, it would be kind of a little bit of a letdown just because it's really, you know, it's, it's that's not a lot of damage. Imagine a 5 second reload, 320 alpha, and only having 33 rounds. You're going to find yourself running out of ammunition within like halfway of the fight. But overall, I am looking forward to playing these tanks. Um, 
So far, I, I can actually definitely say these are worth running. These are worth grinding out now. Uh, but just know you're going to want to take a little bit more time to take those shots to get lined up. You don't want to, you know, pull out and get aggressive. These are not going to be your brawling tanks. These are mid-range to long-range fighters. Or maybe even suppression support being able to push up. Um, Strum Tiger P. Uh, this is another reason why I'm, a, you know, the, the penetration is a little bit low. If this was a regular Ferdinand, that would have been 250, and even with premium, I would be consistently bouncing. And from the Strum Tiger P there, I do believe that might have been a uh, AP round. Also, super lucky shot right there for me. You guys saw that kind of whiffed up into his little uh, top viewport. But snapping inside these tanks is not going to happen with that uh, horrendous aim time and 0.39 accuracy. So trying to boost one of those to help your snapshot potential is going to be best. Uh, overall optics. Optics, in my opinion, on these tanks is definitely going to be a must-have. Because if you're not going to run optics, you're going to find yourself just getting stuck out quite a bit. Because you're not going to have enough view range to really spot anything or anyone uh, taking a shot. Another thing is, with the top armor of this tank, if you are maxing out your 9 degrees of gun depression, I do find these tanks to be extremely good performers on a ridge line. If you are on a ridge line, you can be a bit more aggressive, but if you're trying to support the team and play the mid-range role, um, if you do want to get close inside these tanks, gun depression. If you have the gun depression in your haul down, you can be a lot more aggressive. You can get in those close quarters fights as long as you're able to max out your gun depression. Uh, with the big all weak spot on top of this turret though, even if you're using your gun depression, that weak spot does actually kind of disappear. It shrinks down quite a bit. And I find that to be absolutely wonderful to know that. So, these tanks, they're, they're going to be a struggle for a lot of uh, people to grind through still. Just because, you know, a lot of us like to fire off as many rounds as we can. We want to go for all that damage everything else because you got people trying to mark tanks currently and the fourth mark of excellence in my opinion was a really bad decision on Wargaming's part to add to the game especially with the new 100% true um, XP to it I mean it's it's been really messing up and it, it, yeah just not as fun <laughs> I'd rather have the fourth mark of excellence be 95% and the third mark be 90 that way we don't ever cap it out and overextend the fourth mark of excellence by a crap ton. But mastery badge inside the Progetto 54. And, you know, probably a really well-earned one. Ah, touching Mike. Now, these tanks overall, Progetto 54 specifically, I would say currently, if this is your one of your guys' favorites, it is not bad. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to put some more matches into it. And I'm going to go through all all the heavies. I'm Currently, I've already played the Tier 9 quite a bit. I've already got the matches recorded for that, which more than likely will be uploaded tomorrow or maybe two days from now, but more than likely tomorrow. Rosarante, I'm going to really try to focus this tank out a tad bit and get some good games in it uh, to go with the reworks. And then maybe a month or so down the road, I'll put out an official review of all three of these tanks on how I feel about them, their play styles. But for now, just letting people know about the reworks. And overall, these tanks, they feel a lot better than whenever they first released. Um, whenever they first released, I free XP'd through the entire line and I bought all the tanks to play them one-on-one -on -one. because originally I was going to do reviews of all the tanks after I put 50 matches in each one of them going up that line to be able to check them out. But the thing is, they were just underperforming so much uh, for instance, the armor on the Progetto 66, it's not meant to sit haul down in front of multiple opponents and just sit there and aim and take your time to load. This is more of a peekaboo tank that likes to stay mobile, everything else, but you just kind of feel yourself lacking and getting stuck out in a lot of situations and just taking damage to your gun mantle because it's not exactly thick. Um, but for the matches you guys saw today, equipment-wise, we have optics, loader, ventilation, Ammunition loadout 12, 24, 3. And the commander that we used inside the tank is my American crew, which is using Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Six Sense, Situational Awareness, Off-Road Driving, Clutch Braking, Track Mechanic, Steady Aim, and Rapid Aim. So, as I said, I kind of don't see the point in using Rapid Aim on this tank. Uh, that's a perk that you're probably not going to need. 
because if I come inside here and I try to remember how they set this all up because they've changed it like four times beforehand that used to tell you what it was. It, it doesn't anymore. It's all got Okay, 33.22. So yeah, I was, I was correct about that. A little bit of an increase. Uh, you're not going to need rapid aim. If you guys want to build a crew for your Progetto 54 or basically throughout the entire line, uh, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, rapid aim is not going to be needed. But these three perks right here, uh, steady aim to kind of counteract the debuff that they put on them, off-road driving, definitely off-road driving, clutch braking, you're not going to need it. Um, up next on top of this, you know, six sense, situational awareness, track mechanic. So currently two freebie perks. If you guys want to, you can put last stand on. If you hit that low health point, uh, you can put snapshot on it or maybe even run and gun because you're going to be relocating quite a bit. So with relocating your bloom, it's going to pop out. And then if you have that, um, run and gun on it, that bloom is actually going to be a little bit tighter. So like whenever you come to a stop, it's a little bit faster to aim in all the way. So primarily these tanks, as we go all the way back, I don't want to go all the way back. Definitely be worth the grind. I'm looking forward to uh, playing playing them a tad bit more and possibly tomorrow, Progetto 66. Other than that, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you. Sorry, I didn't go through all the um, updates that they had on this. I went over the major ones. So, yeah, guys, catch you on the battlefield. These tanks have no armor on top of them. Artillery hurts, by the way. Definitely hurts. But have not yet been set on fire. So that low fire percent chance, really nice to see. I'm out of here. Struggling now. It's like I can click the button anytime. And I can just get it.